Hi, this is John Fallows, V6EY, with the second of my uh, videos on getting started with GNU Radio. I call these Hello World projects because when you're using a new software development tool, quite often the first thing you do is uh, figure out how to print Hello World to the monitor. Uh, in this case, Hello World means let's actually do something with the code. And my other uh, getting started video featured an FM receiver, which is the easiest first program. Uh, here's an AM receiver, which is a little bit more complex, but not really that, that much harder. And uh, I'm using a, uh, a, a, a converter that converts uh, 0 to 30 megahertz up to 125 megahertz so that it comes within the range of the RTL-SDR. So what you're watching on the screen right now is a shortwave station from Cuba on 13820 kilohertz. It's nice and strong signal, and this is being picked up by the RTL-SDR, and it's being decoded by my little uh, program here that I've written uh, that gives me a beautiful software-defined receiver with lots of gain, lots of signal, and also variable bandwidth if I want to tune it down. I, I'm reducing it there and back up again to 7 kilohertz for this AM signal. And what you see in the bottom of the screen is the band pass, which is basically what's coming out of the receiver across this chunk of frequency spectrum. And then the one signal that's being filtered that I'm listening to uh, being filtered and all the other channels being rejected. So there's my AM software-defined radio. This works also on broadcast band, uh, shortwave. You can use this same model to build a, a airband monitoring, whatever. Just remember, what I'm using here is a converter to convert the signal from the RTL-SDR because that dongle doesn't normally cover below 24, 28 megahertz, so you need to use the converter. Okay, so let's run through the program in, uh, in uh, GNU Radio Companion, which basically lets you do define a radio using visual blocks and connect them all together. And then your graph on the screen, when you run the program, it generates a Python source code. And that Python script runs and uh, pulls in all of the C++ signal processing blocks and hooks them together. And lo and behold, you get a radio. <laughs> so we start off with the options uh, box, which basically you define what your project's called and uh, select which GUI you want to use. In my case, the WX GUI. And you've got to make that selection uh, and stick to one or the other of the GUIs that are available. You'll notice over here whole bunch of GUI widgets that are available to your programs, one under QT and one under WX, chooser box, sliders, text, and so on. And uh, you'll see me using those in a moment. Okay, so we want to start off now by, um, by uh, picking some variables that we're going to work with in our program. And, uh, and then we'll also uh, <coughs> just go from there. So uh, we have a sample rate, which we're running at uh, two mega samples per second. Uh, we want to recognize that we're also using a converter. And so when I run this receiver, everything that I hear is being converted up to 125 megahertz. So I need to remember that when I'm running the radio and displaying the frequency. So I've just, just simply got this up, uh, set up as a variable called convert that I use to uh, just keep track of the converter's base frequency. And I'm also using some decimation, which I've got set to 10, 10 times, because I only want to work with a little bit of the data that I'm getting with the radio, not all of it. So I'm going to throw away 90% uh, of the data and just keep the 10% I need uh, for the baseband that I want to demodulate. Okay, so for control, uh, I decided rather than uh, use a slider, I would just simply create a text box. And basically, in the text box, I enter the frequency in kilohertz. And uh, my default is 770, which is an AM station locally here in Calgary that I will have when I run the program and start it up. That's what shows up. And uh, you can position where you want these controls to appear on the screen. Uh, for RF gain, I've got a slider, and the slider runs between 10 and 70 dB, so that's fairly straightforward. You'll see me control the gain later on. And then similarly for volume, I've got a slider between 0 and 100, 
and it also will show up and be placed on the screen at a certain position so I can control the volume. Now, one additional thing I've done with this is create a passband slider because I want to vary the width of my filter between 3 kilohertz and 10 kilohertz with a default of 6. So this gives me a range of filters that I can easily change while the radio is running. Okay? So, start off then with the source. In this case, the source is the RTL-SDR uh, dongle, uh, but uh, I'm also uh, using the converter. So, the sample rate, 2 mega, mega samples per second, okay, that's what I've set in my variable. For the frequency, I've also got to take the frequency that I want to tune to, uh, which is set in the text box, multiply it by 1,000 to go from kilohertz to megahertz, and then add 125 megahertz to that uh, because I'm using a converter. So in actual fact, when I'm listening to a station on 770 kilohertz, it will show up on the radio at 125.77 because that's where the converter puts it. I've also added some frequency correction in because I noticed when I ran this, uh, my RTL-SDR was slightly off frequency, and I've got the RF gain being controlled by the slider that I've set up. Okay, so coming out of the uh, radio, I want to get rid of most of the data, so I'm going to decimate. My decimate value is 10. And so this simply is not going to interpolate anything. I'm just going to get rid of most of the data, divide it by 10, and so I'll end up with a 200 kilohertz bandwidth. Okay. And coming out of there, I also want to show what the radio is hearing. So I've got another GUI uh, uh, FFT sync. And what, what this does, uh, centered on the frequency that I'm listening to, I'm going to show that 200 kilohertz of signals either side of the center frequency, just like you find on a normal SDR radio screen. So that's, that's all. Just to show me what signals are around uh, the frequency I'm listening to. Okay, so the signals come out of the RTL-SDR radio. They get decimated by 10. Then we're going into a low-pass filter. And now this is where I am setting basically the frequency for the signal or the bandwidth for the signal I'm going to decode. So I've got this defaulting uh, to a cutoff frequency of passband times 1000. So I've got a slider for setting passband with numbers ranging between 3 and 10. So my cutoff frequency for this filter will be between 3000 and 10,000 kilohertz and it's running at the lower sampling rate, uh, 2 megahertz, divided by uh, the decimate rate, which is 200 kilohertz. So coming out, here's a 200 kilohertz filter with a passband of uh, something like 6 or 7 or 8 uh, kilohertz. Uh, this transition width just simply tells the filter how quickly uh, it transitions from allowing signals through to stopping them and uh, that will determine the number of taps that the program will automatically compute for the filter. So stepping back, signal from the radio, resampled down to a lower rate, filtered to get rid of signals on either side of the one I want to hear, and I'm going into an AM demodulator, which is again built right into the uh, uh, GNU radio, and I'm running this at uh, the 200 kilohertz rate, it's also got an audio bandpass filter in it, which is actually cutting off audio uh, at 5 kilohertz. Uh, so even if I use the wider, uh, the wider amount on my, uh, my low-pass filter, this audio filter is still going to cut it off. Although I can, uh, actually I'll change that to 11. And I'll change that to 10 so we can get the full audio coming through. There, okay. And then we do that uh, same thing with the uh, resampler to get uh, down to a 48 kilohertz rate for the audio card. Uh, that constant multiplier again comes from the volume slider. It will either uh, reduce or let the audio come through at full gain. And then the audio sync will send it to the speaker. Again, fairly simple to set up. I've also got here a 
uh, FFT sync or a, a GUI display of the filtered signal. And uh, what you'll be able to see here is how well the filtering is get, getting rid of the adjacent signals. And I've got this set up to run at the uh, same rate as the radio and always center on the frequency that I'm tuned to. So having done all of that, if you want to save the, uh, the changes you've made, you just save them or it'll save automatically when you run it. But this whole graph is producing a, a receiver. It's fairly simple. I'm sure if you look at this, you can build this yourself in a matter of minutes and uh, get yourself uh, a pretty low-cost shortwave receiver. Now, there's not much features in here. <laughs> like, I haven't built AGC into it. Uh, I haven't done... There's a whole bunch of stuff I could have done. I just haven't done. So there's my uh, local station on 770 in Calgary. I've got uh, it being filtered at 6 kilohertz. Here's the bandwidth around the signal. See, there's this one signal at 7 cm, which is the station I'm listening to. There's another one down below at uh, 700. But you'll notice that one's disappeared after the filtering. So when you look at the filtered signal, my filtering is really, really good. Uh, I've, gotten, uh, I've gotten rid of most of the uh, stations that I don't want to hear. There's the auto-scaling, so you can see there's a great deal of... Uh, a great deal of suppression of off-frequency signals just by the simple low-pass filter uh, that I used in this radio. Uh, pretty neat stuff. And uh, the signal, they're showing me a power of about minus 20 dB, and the base of my decoding is around minus 80. So I've got about 60 dB of signal-to-noise ratio coming out of this RTL-SDR right now. Now, if I want to go back at uh, to shortwave, I mean, one of the typical things to do is to go to WWV on uh, 10,000 kilohertz or 10 megahertz. And I'm going to have to jack the RF gain up because this is a distance signal. So there's WWV giving some uh, weather and space weather reports on 10 megahertz. And again, getting a really good signal to noise ratio. Okay, and we can pop back to that Radio Cuba if I can remember what frequency it was on. Uh, it must have been 820. Or maybe it's gone off. Who knows? <laughs> Let's see what we can find. This isn't the best control. No, it, it's moved frequency now. I see one here at around. 850. This is not the best way to tune a radio, folks. <laughs> 845. Okay. But anyway, you can see it really works. There's some sort of signal in there. Anyway, there's an AM radio. Now um, let's go to 15. There's WWB on 15 megahertz showing up pretty nicely. Anyway, here's your AM radio. We'll, uh, we'll go back to the broadcast band, uh, find our local CBC station here. Uh, we don't need that much gain. We'll turn it down. And there's our local CBC station. There's two other stations just above and below it on the AM broadcast band, one at 960, one at 1060, one at 1010. And we can see up here that... Uh, this uh, low-pass filter that we set up is doing a good job of no knocking down the level of the signals adjacent to the one we're listening to. Uh, it still lets them through a bit. And then there's a signal we're listening to at the center frequency. So all of this radio is actually generated by a script in GNU radio. Uh, I've made an FM receiver, now I've made an AM receiver. And I guess the next one I'll probably work on is a sideband receiver. But these are all the basics. There's tons of features in here. There's all kinds of signal processing blocks. You can make this as complicated as you want. Consider this just sort of a starting point for building uh, uh, an HF AM receiver. Thank you very much. This is John V6EY.